Hello and welcome to our second video in our series on self-efficacy. Once again, it's me, Mr. Kennedy, and today I want to talk to you a little bit about expert behavior. Last time we talked about mindset and how as individuals we can choose how we look at our successes and our failures and that a growth mindset looks as failures as opportunity for growth and that we can make the decision to choose a growth mindset and help ourselves grow in the future. But as some of you might have realized watching last week's video, it's not enough just to say, okay, I'm gonna get better, I know I can get better. That won't by itself make you better. So this week, I wanna look at something called expert behavior, which is really quite simple. It's how people who actually succeed, who become experts, how do they act? What do they do? Uh, and especially we're gonna look at an idea of mastery. How do you work towards being a master of something? We're going to look at a couple real-life examples, and hopefully it's useful. Let's check it out. So we'll start with this guy. I think you can probably recognize who it is. He's pretty famous. He's Mozart. And he started studying music in 1760. And he's well known for being a, an incredible genius. And often people say, oh, well, when Mozart was this old, he had done this. And we think of Mozart as being, wow, he just must have been pure genius. But actually... He wrote his first masterpiece when he was 17 years old. Certainly impressive, but that means that it took him 12 years of constant musical study to write his first masterpiece. 12 years to mastery. So even though he was very young, it was his continued work over a long period of time that enabled him to do this. And that's what we're going to look at today. That's the expert behavior. What was it about Mozart that enabled him to make that success in that time? And so it comes to that kind of a general question and a general answer, which is that geniuses are made and not born. For instance, IQ doesn't seem to be that important in success. For one thing, this is a whole other can of worms, but IQ seems to be malleable. You can change your IQ through different kinds of work. But also in things like chess, having a high IQ does not necessarily correlate with success. Dedication and hard work do. Or things like talent. Sometimes we think certain people must be talented or more talented than others. In sports like basketball, it's true that things like height and weight and physical build are important. But it doesn't seem true that there are just people who are automatically good at basketball. The people who play in the NBA have practiced for years and years and years to perfect their skills. That's what, that's what makes them successful. Well, if it's not those things, what is it? What, what allows us to actually get better at things? And it truly turns out that psychologists and sociologists have studied this in depth. Deliberate practice is the most important thing that we can do to get better at anything. Here are pictures of a golf player, Tiger Woods. Now, he has some personal problems, but his success in golf is unquestioned. And what made him the golf star that he was, perhaps is, is continued practice. He, he practiced putts over and over again, and he videotaped himself practicing putts. He looked at what he did wrong, and he made it better, and continued to practice, so that he became a master golfer. And that's just not about golf or sports. We can do that with anything, with essay writing, any of those things, we can work to make ourselves better. So then the question is, how long do I have to practice to master something? And the answer lines up pretty well with what we saw with Mozart earlier. It takes 10 years or about 10,000 hours to go from no knowledge to mastery of almost anything. Golf, music, writing, history. You need to focus on improving that skill for 10 years to reach the level of a master. And that seems to line up with the experience that we have of people like grandmaster chess players, excellent ping pong players, artists, musicians. There are not many examples of people who became masters in their field in less than 10 years of practice. So how do they practice? What is it that we can do to actually make sure that our practice is deliberate? One thing is that we need to make sure we know what practice is. It's not when we're at work, and it's not when we're at play. When we're talking about work here, it means we're not, when we're practicing, we're not trying to produce a result. We're not worried about what we end up with. Because then we're gonna to try to just do what's safe. Practice needs to be purposely for the purpose, practice needs to be only for the purpose of improving. 
And it also isn't play. There are going to be some times when you're having a good time and just enjoying the skill that you, you're developing. But that also is not practice. That will, not, that will also not add to your skill. Practice needs to be focused. Specifically, it needs to be focused on feedback and repetition. You need to see what you're doing wrong and then try it again. And see what you're doing wrong and then try it again. And see what you're doing wrong and then try it again. That is how people get better. In dance, in soccer, in the cello, in, in, in seemingly in almost anything. Feedback, that is, did I do it right or did I do it wrong? What did I do wrong? And repetition, trying it again, trying to do it the right way, seems to be what leads to success. And that's hopefully where you'll end up. With these two steps, mindset, believing that you can change what you can do, and specific evidence-based instruction. With these two steps, mindset, believing that you can improve yourself, get better at the things that you want to do, and expert behavior, specific purposeful knowledge about how to practice to get better, Hopefully you can move forward from this week and get even better at your schoolwork, your sports, your music, whatever it is that really drives you. Good luck and do your best. Thank you very much for watching.